Hello there, Mr. K here, the Mediocre Painter, and I do YouTube videos to get you into the wargaming hobby, because I've made the mistakes, so you don't have to! So, today I'm going to talk about Mortal Realms, which is basically a subscription-based magazine with Warhammer miniatures on the front of it. Hatchet, alongside of Games Workshop, have done this already with uh, 40k, basically, and this is basically an Age of Sigmar version of it. And if you look at it online, you can basically subscribe to it online and they'll basically send you uh, four issues a month <coughs> and they're $7.99 an issue. The first issue is actually $2.99 as an introduction and you get a ton of stuff on that first issue as you do with you know subscription things like this. And back in my day, where in the 80s and um, the 90s, there was a company called Marshall Cavendish who used to do this kind of thing and um, there was one called Treasures of the Earth that I remember subscribing to which gave you gemstones each issue and there was another blues one as well which gave you CDs each issue with different blues musicians and things like that and I remember the blues one being really good actually and introduced me to all kinds of different blues artists that I wouldn't have ordinarily gone out and bought and it represented at the time actually fairly reasonable um, you know, value for money so the question is here, you know, does this really represent decent value for money if you do the subscription? Well, they sweeten the deal on the subscription. They give you some extra stuff to, you know, that you might use when you're first getting into the hobby, like um, like um, additional materials, like brushes, mold line removers, that kind of thing. Um, but to be honest, the discount on the models you're getting, if you look at it overall, is probably only about 15%. So it's not amazing, and there's probably models in that collection that you may not really be interested in. It's basically Stormcast Eternals and Night Horns. <clears throat> and maybe, really, you know, you don't want a Stormcast Eternals army, but you want Night Horn or vice versa. And so, I think it's better to actually pick and choose the issues that you really, you know, want. Because individual I issues can really represent a substantial means of saving, because they are stock. Games Workshop model on these issues, right? The, this one in particular, um, issue five, is Andrea Azurbolt, who's a Knight in Canter, and that's seven ninety nine. Try and buy a Knight in Canter retail, you're going to be paying more than that. So this is actually really quite a good issue to go out and find and pick up. Best place to probably get these, um, I think Games Workshop stores are selling them, but um, Forbidden Planet is the best. And if you actually are interested in picking up a bunch of these, you know, from different issues and stuff, so Forbidden Planet's probably your best bet. They have them priced at like £7.50, not £7.99, I think £7.49 actually, but they do charge you like £5 delivery, um, but that's kind of a cap, I think. So you could actually order like 10 issues of this and basically have it delivered to your door for the same you know, retail price of £7.99. So that's probably the best way to kind of play it out. You can have a look online and see, you know, what's actually being issued in these issues, and there are people keeping track on it, track of it uh, on Faux Hammer, for example, because I think the European releases in Italy and such started a little earlier and things like that. I actually have some models from the um, earlier. Um, ones off of this so like you know that first edition for example where they're giving you away three sequiturs 20 chain rasps some dice and a ruler they obviously have done some a little bit of cost cutting there in order to be able to get those sequiturs out the door they've actually used like a golden plastic um, which is slightly softer than the normal stuff that they do with those models and they actually look pretty cool because they are gold but they are definitely a softer lower grade plastic now once you but the detail is just fine so once you paint them up to be honest you wouldn't notice and and to me that kind of demonstrates that games workshop could produce a board game with lower quality miniatures and give you you know a, a single box experience of something you know because they've got that ability to tap into that lower grade stuff if they need to to do something like, something like this um because i think that's one of the things that they're really missing so if you subscribe that's the only way you're going to be able to get this that, that first issue that i mentioned at 2.99 you're not going to be able to find that on your shelves anymore and you certainly can't find it anywhere else the 
best place to find this stuff, like I said, is Forbidden Planet. And yeah, I think your best picking up it, picking it up really issue by issue. Like I say, if you did subscribe, then you do get some bonuses, and there is a premium option where you can pay a little bit more, and you'll get access to other models, and actually you get a greater saving on those models than you do on these stock ones. And if you look at this stuff from like issue to issue, it's quite variable in terms of the model worth and the issue cost being flat at seven ninety nine. So at some cases, actually, they, they're certainly not. <clears throat> they're certainly making money um, quite clearly from you because it might just be like one paint pot or, or on the actual magazine, and this magazine costs you know almost nothing for them to produce. And the paint pots, less retail is two seventy five. They're selling for seven ninety nine. So some issues, you know, they are clearly you know making money out of you and relying on you subscribing, and also wanting the continuity. So kind of getting you into that collector mentality. And another issue is basically there's a very clear um, incentive. So at some point, I think in the next two or three issues, there's a seller star ballista uh, available. Um, at the cover price of seven ninety nine, well, sell a star ballista to buy, I think, is over fifteen pounds. So that's oh, that's well worth picking up if you want to sell a star ballista in your Stormcast Eternals army. And who wouldn't want one because they're absolutely excellent. So you really are best, I think, picking these up when you actually want them. As for actually how they are work and described, they have like a you know twelve uh, age limit on these things. It says recommended for twelve plus, and Really, to be honest, the way this is written in here, it's really targeted at someone even younger than that, I would say. And um, and that's no bad thing, I would say, encouraging people at the age of like 9, 10 to get into this hobby. I think it's a good thing, that's when I got into it. And basically, it's a bunch of fluff, it sort of describes, you know, uh, aspects of um, the mortal realms in this book, and then it starts to talk about the Knight Encanter, Encanter in particular, in, in particular, so it talks about the Knight Encanter. Oops, and, uh, it is designed to sort of come apart and go in a binder. And so basically, here it talks about you know Zandria and that she's a hammer of Sigma. <clears throat> talks about Wars of the Dead. So there's quite a lot of fluff here, and then we get on to the actual you know, building her. And also, you know, uh, it's just making an assumption that you have a prior edition where you've got the Retributor armor paint and it's teaching you to basically, you know, give her three coats of paint to make her nice and gold. <clears throat> and I'm assuming in, like, in later editions you'll get more paint and they'll say, hey, go back and do a wash on this person, that kind of thing. It then works through like a, a playthrough um, scenario where basically you set up Xandria to go against your chain rasps that you had in a previous edition and it walks you through how close combat how you know the hero phase movement phase and how close combat works and what abilities you've got including the spells and so on this is actually really nicely done in terms of the way they've laid it out to make it clear to you know someone who's new to it you know in terms of Hey, this is how you move the guys. This is how the hero phase might work. This is, you know, this is what happened. They rolled the dice. These people died, and so on. I think they've actually done a really nice job here in explaining how it works. And it's nice to actually have pictorial representations because I think one of the tricky things about Age of Sigmar, to be honest, is how does the pile in work? You know, how does the base-to-base -base contact thing work? What about my weapon range? Things like that, but here, you know, it kind of uh, really does clearly show you that pictorially, and then um, it, it gives you. I was hoping actually they would give you like a war scroll sort of page for you know Zandria, but they don't really. They kind of give you this thing at the back here. They don't really give you a proper war scroll. But still, it's nice to have an individual knight in cancer model that's a bit different to every, the one that everybody else has got. So this isn't really targeted at the experienced person like myself. It's really targeted at a beginner and someone who's getting into the hobby. 
But that, but experienced folks such as myself shouldn't discount it because it's a good way to pick up models you may have been after for some time. Or it's, uh, there are a couple of exclusive models as well. There is a nine to auto exclusive model too, which I think is actually the next issue, which is issue six. Um, so you shouldn't really discount it. And if you have like a Stormcast Eternals um, army or a Nighthorn army, it is a cheap way to pick up models. So at some point, I believe, for example, the Thorns of the Briar Queen, which is a set from Shadespire, will be on the cover of one of these issues. That set, that Shadespire set, I think retails for seventeen fifty, maybe. You can probably pick it up for fifteen, but you can basically get it kind of half price if you buy an issue of Mortal Realms. So I think there's a lot to be said for that and there's definitely a few issues here and there which represent absolutely excellent value for money, you know, because you're gonna get, you know, you know, five three castigators and a griff hound or something, or which is you know, that's normally I think a fifteen pound set and so you're getting that for eight pounds and, and things like that. And there's there are other issues that are gonna represent great value for money and you probably worthwhile you picking it up. In terms of recommending a subscription for a beginner, I don't think so. I think you're I think you're better off uh, buying the odd issue that you might want with the models that you find interesting and probably really buying White Dwarf to be perfectly honest. You're gonna get more into the hobby from that than you are from this. And there's so much other information available on the internet and things like that these days. You don't need magazine material quite like you did when I was when I was getting into the hobby when I was sort of uh, in my tweens and my teens. So it's all right. I don't think I don't I wouldn't recommend the subscription, and I don't think the discounting on this is as good as it was in the 40k stuff that they did. But I think maybe they learnt a lesson there. That could be what it is. Or it might actually just be down to fundamental economics. Age of Sigmar is not as popular as 40k at the end of the day. So there's perhaps no great surprise there. So, if you like this video, please like, please subscribe. I will be doing more and I'll catch you next time.